Welcome back to another upload. And you're wondering, why am I standing? I don't know if you're wondering, but I am ready to don the suit again. This is part three for the Rococo suit. Bunch of updates, it's gonna be awesome. Let's put this on first. And I've had this suit for a while. <laughs> Still kind of snug, but a lot has happened since. COVID happened, which changed a bunch of stuff, the schedule, but also work, which was the biggest change. New responsibilities, totally different schedule, and I just focused on different things. So the suit lay kind of dormant. But then Rococo Studio Beta came out. So of course I had to try it, because it's a revamp, has new options, the UI is totally different. So of course I'm gonna try it and kind of compare what's going on, and this is why I'm to make this new update for part three. There is more to come too, because I got the gloves and that's going to be sweet. And the update process is really straightforward. You just go to the website, of course, link in the description, you download the beta version and you can go through all those pages and it will show you what's new. One of the things that I did too, is I wanted to explore better measurements because you can start with the default measurements, but I also wanted to do setups where I have the default measurement, that is my height, I'm 184 centimeters, but you can also measure your legs, the wingspan, as in like your arm wingspan, your back, the hips, everything to make it a bit more precise. So as you create your actor, you can name it. Of course, you can sign the colors. I put in my height in centimeters and not in inches. And this is with my custom measurements, but I'm gonna do one more with the default actor. So I'm gonna create a new actor, call this JDH default. And I'm just gonna put in only the actual height values like that and leave it like that. And of course, gotta take the battery and plug it in my suit. Let's get started. And then I'm gonna go into default position. There you go, calibration complete, pops into place. Here I am. It's not too bad. Again, the calibration, all that. Look at that, the suit is fairly green in places. So not bad by default, like one arm is a bit lower there, but it tracks all of this. You got a little bit of shoulder movement. It definitely tracks my hips. And a big test is always, how are the hands? And that's pretty good. This is a bit of a problem on my custom one. So when I do this, it almost goes through. And when I do this, there's still a gap here, but it kind of changes. I do this every now and then, it's almost like a test. You can see how things change a little bit. But on the custom one, I'm about here. So I still have to change a bunch of stuff. But anyway, that seems pretty solid. And I'm gonna go and record. I did some switching here, you'll see, I'll edit that and explain what happened here. So do the calibration, that's all good to go. This is actually a recording of when I did it. So this is what I did, I walked through, I did a couple of tests here, sit down and so on. I did a couple more, this continues on and so on into the editing process. So why am I showing you this? There are two things that I learned. So when you're in here and you have a bunch of your recordings, right? You can see the other actors here that you can turn off. What happened was that I went back into this and I wanted to add another wall. So you can go here, you can go back. And what I did was, well, I didn't want to see all of these other actors in there. And instead of going ghost or visibility on off, I thought once you record this, you can just go right click, remove from scene, just because I wanted it to be clean. But the thing is, when you have something like this, I'm not gonna do it now, and you actually remove the actor, your take that you just recorded is gone. So when you're done recording, this recording is not baked as in, that's the data, that's the recording, you're good to go. Whatever you're doing with your measurements or whatever you're doing with your actor has no influence. That is not the case. So I had a fantastic, trust me bro, type of recording that was great and it all went away. So that is one thing. Something else that happens that seems to be a bug with the studio beta is that, and I have it recorded, this is what happens. You're done and you say, we just hit end, right? And then it's processing, recording, and it stays and it stays and it stays and there's nothing you can do. And you basically have to quit out. So I would recommend that when you have a good take, go back here. I would just go in here, new project for YouTube. And then in here you say new scene, and I say example, and then that's that. 
that creates a whole new scene. You got to go back in there and create an actor. You do all that good stuff here. I am 184. Leave it at that. And you can, of course, do your, your custom measurements. And I'm now sitting. This is post uh, recording. So my suit is not on. I think that would be the safer way to go about this. So next up, I want to show you how to edit this. So let's pause this and let me take off the suit. There you go. Back to the old spot. So here we are and you can press play. You can also scrub and you can see the whole thing. Now, the cool thing about this is that you have a bunch of options here to adjust just the way you see it. Now, being a Maya user, I wish it was just a complete, uh, you know, the usual alt and then all the your mouse configurations here. But you can pan around like this. But I would also go control minus and plus to change this so you can see the feet. Because sometimes you want to record and then you're too close to it and you can't see what the feet are doing. In this case, it's okay. In case you have something where it's really close, like it's pretending something like this. Again, there are hotkeys where you can change things to top and front and side and a bunch of stuff. And if you go to just the front version, it actually defaults pretty well, of course, with the, uh, the proper UI selection there. If you select your character, shift, you can do this if you want to rotate around. You can zoom in and out like this. I have this on my uh, Wacom tablet on my ring. So I can just go in and out like that. Well, let's switch back. Let me show you a scene that I thought would be really interesting in terms of a stress test. Because generally, I think the recording is pretty cool on a big scale. Now, in terms of detail, there's some stuff that I need to figure out or maybe it's something that needs to be fixed. I'm not quite sure. So I'm in here and I can adjust this already just to see the feet here. This is me walking. Now, one of the first things you can see is that there is a drop in the root. Now, some of these hiccups is because I was recording at the same time. So I feel like if I do a screen recording and a mocap recording, then I get glitches. So I have the best recordings when I don't have any of this on in terms of the screen recording that I'm doing right now. And I just record the data. So every now and then you see like here when it goes back and it kind of stutters a little bit. That's because of that. Now, the bigger root drops, that is something I need to figure out. I'm slightly confused as to why that is happening. At the same time, you can see, though, that the foot plans are pretty solid. This is pretty good. But a general thing is that I feel like I'm leaning backwards a lot. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's something in the calibration. I'm not quite sure there. But let's continue on. And this is me going out. So what you can do here, I'm going to zoom out of this. I'm going outside the office, around the corner, downstairs. So the downstairs doesn't work because it's an inertia-based suit. And the second Rococo suit that I'm going to release has, of course, elevation fix, which is really cool. But I'm now downstairs. And you can see that it's totally fine. So I can go back here. And this is me going through the hallway, past the kitchen. And I'm going through different rooms. There are walls. Now there are some issues now in crossing legs. Now this is the laundry room. And again, this is all separate rooms, separate walls. This is downstairs. I'm opening up the garage door with a slight step down. Let's go over there. And now I'm going through the garage past a ping pong table into the garage where I work out. So obviously there's some issues with the legs, but the fact that this is still recording, and you can see, I'm gonna scrub through this here. Look at the feet. They are rock solid. There is no drift. This is bananas to me. This is the garage with concrete walls downstairs. And I'm going over to the wall. I'm gonna to touch the wall here. That's the outside door. It goes to the uh, to the garden part. So I still have the root problem, but I have the same problem in my office and downstairs. So that is, to me, this must be a measurement thing with the length or some an inertia problem where if the leg is in the air, there's something when you lift up the leg that the root might drop down. I have that sometimes when I lift just one leg up. So I think that is something I need to fix there. But again, I'm going through the laundry room again I mean, this to me is really impressive. Look at the feet. 
And the thing is, you can go in here and I can, there's a, a slider here. So you can scrub that or scrub, you can pull that in. So I can pull that in here as well. So you can see what's going on here. Bring that in the middle. And so the green and the blue shows you where the footsteps are. And you can show it like this as well. So if I go through there, you can see when it's solid, this is what happens. Now, if I want to go in there and say, well, hey, I can delete this. I can take this whole thing and shift it just in case. So it's going to plant that foot sooner and hold it longer and then let go. So again, this is for you to shift around. Now, if I want to make this even bigger, I can't. So this is something where I wish I could go in further because I would like to zoom in here, but that seems to be a limitation that when you record something for too long, I could be wrong. Of, of course, comments if there are if you know, better knowledge about all this, but I would love to tweak some things and see more in here. So let's go back to the full thing here in kitchen. I'm going back upstairs. This is the upstairs part. So obviously locomotion is still there, but the elevation's not there. But still, the tracking on the body and the arms, that's still pretty good. Turn around the corner. Now I am back into my office. So let's zoom back in here. So we got some potential leg issues there before. A little bit, yeah. Some crossover problems. But this is me back in the office. So after all of this, being downstairs, doing all my shenanigans, look at the feet. I mean... There's no drift. They're pretty solid. Okay, here's a little drift when you lift up, the root kind of goes down. So I think generally when you have your feet up, there's a bit of a problem with the suit. So there's some stretching here. Okay, so around the leg, just kind of pushing the tracking a bit more. So me leaning back, that seems to be something I always have regardless of whatever custom measurements I have. I did some on fours. Definitely some issues there with the hands. Now, any mocap take always needs cleanup. But there you go. That's at the end. <laughs> going crazy here, but I think that would be even without going downstairs. It does track this, which is pretty cool. If you do this here, and I can take toe bent off, you can see how there is a difference there let me go back and then you can turn this on and you can see how the toes are bending so that's pretty cool and you can do all of this if I take locomotion off here then you get that very steady root of course when you jump it looks kind of funky but if you're walking around this is what you would have so you can definitely decide decide how you want to go about this or you want this with or without locomotion Let's go back. But that is that recording here. I did the crazy one where I actually went outside the house just because I was really impressed with that I can go downstairs and it still tracks everything. Nothing exploded. Thought that that's pretty impressive in terms of the distance. And I think again, generally, it's pretty impressive in terms of what it can do on a bigger scale. This is going downstairs, same issue. That's normal. That's the elevation issue of suit number one. So now I'm going to go out, still tracking pretty well. Okay, so actually, hold on. See, again, I want to go here. If you look at this, go here, and I'm going to zoom in. This is me downstairs. Look at the feet. That is pretty solid, I have to say, because in the legacy software, the feet were drifting. Look at this. I mean, you know, there's some, thing, there's some things you need to clean up in terms of what are the toes doing? What are the heels doing? See, that foot needs to be a little bit lower. But to me, these are also really normal mocap cleanup issues. But the fact that I'm downstairs and this is without any type of drifting here is really impressive. Now, going out, there's a slope that goes down here. There you go. Now I'm on the sidewalk looking right, looking left. That's still somewhat okay. And then you got that lean back from which I always have though. And then as I'm crossing the street here, it's gonna start to break. Wait for it. Yeah, that's not gonna work. And then it falls really apart. But 
as I'm walking here, you can see this is two blocks apart. It took a while to recalibrate. So here, when it looks better, this is me actually going back into the office. There you go. Waving in, coming back in, and that's back to the beginning. So I just wanted to show you that despite some aggressive testing, it's doing really well. So for this one, this is my general calisthenics test. Again, you can see really solid foot planting. There's not too much that happens when I'm on one leg. This is me sitting on a very soft couch. Also not too bad. This is sitting lay, way down. Now, when you lift your legs, that's when it goes haywire. So anytime feet are off the ground, when you lay flat on your back on the ground, you lift the legs, then it gets pretty bananas. But even after all of this, right, let's go back here, look at the foot placement. I don't see any drift. I mean, that to me is pretty bananas. I'm gonna zoom out and scroll a bit faster. So this is me going through the office and then go out the office room. This is the door right there. Go into my little one's room and then into the bedroom and then back into the office. So again, I have the lean back, which is something I need to figure out how to fix and the sudden root drops, which are pretty severe. This would be, you know, there's some poppy stuff you need to fix cleanup mode. Other than that, again, I'm doing a one legged swing here. So let's go back and get a bit closer into this timeline. So let's turn this on so you can see which one is which. So blue one gets on the ground right here. So if I want this to be sooner, I can move this over and it's gonna, it's gonna pop over and hold this. Just in case you need to do some fixes or you want it to be later. But if you do this later, see, then you have some drift in this leg because that's not what the actual plan timing was. Control Z is undo if you make any changes. That's always handy there. But again, I mean, I'm looking at this and you get pretty solid planting of the feet. You know, that's my ankle moving. But after all of this, there are some shifts here so you still have to have some cleanup, but all of this to me seems really, really solid. Look at this. Because that's my major concern, or was my major concern, were the feet. So if I look at Studio Beta and all those tests, look at that, how it tracks my hips. <laughs> all pretty good. I'm really not worried about any type of tracking of the feet. I'm more worried about the root plops and me leaning back. Now this could be something where in the initial recording, I lean back to compensate already. That could be something, but I'm curious why the root is dropping so harshly. So that's something you definitely need to fix. So generally the cleanup options in within Pseudobeta are okay. You can change the planting of the feet. I wish there was something more in terms of maybe the root or some corrective. So if you have your T pose or whatever, and you start recording and you feel like mm, there's a constant drift, it would be great to have like a skeleton view and maybe adjust the skeleton in this versus exporting this and adjusting that later in Maya, whatever software you use. So I think a few more tools within that would be cool. At the same time, when I compare this to the legacy version, the drift, in the root in the feet is much more severe and in here i basically see no drift and i can go outside the office i can go downstairs which blows my mind i can go through rooms into the garage with concrete walls there are there's no drift on the feet so whatever quirks you have in the studio beta and it's beta for a reason they're going to improve on it they're going to fix it but weighing the pros and cons i will definitely stick to the beta because a i prefer the ui it's cleaner and having no drift is huge because adjusting drift in maya all that is just extra work is a huge pain so for me my next step is going to be how can I make sure that the root is not dropping when I take steps and making sure that the posture is okay so I don't constantly lean back because I don't lean that far back when I walk in real life this is not a replication of how I really am 
hopefully, but I definitely want to figure out how to fix that. Now, part four is going to be, you record all of this, you fix it in Studio Beta, like the foot plans, even though really there's not that much to fix and you can see the foot rolls. It's really, I'm pretty impressed about what the feet are doing because I'm mostly concerned about the foot placement. So next step is to take all of that and put that into Maya. So how does that translate from this data onto a rig? What kind of rig? Can you transfer that to a cartoony rig and so on? So I want to see how that works and do some couple more tests in terms of the recording style for speed and how you can use that as rough blocking for your cartoony shop, for instance. So stay tuned. If you're still watching, thank you. Always very patient. This is a longer clip, but I want to go in depth and show you really the ins and outs and have an honest walkthrough, no pun intended, of the suit with the limitations and the pros, of course. And that's it from me. So thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in my next upload. Subscribe if you don't miss any of those and uh, I'll see you then.